welcome to another edition of Yours Chris Weekly, coming up in today's episode. We'll be lifting and dividing the astelia plant in the garden. We'll be looking at spear pull in palm trees. We'll be cutting back various euphorbias in the garden. We'll be looking at the purple fantasy plant and having a catch up with the carnivorous plants that I've got in the garden. This Astelia here was a very small plant when I planted it five years ago, just about as big as where my hands are, just further back. And over the years it's grown really, really big. It's covering this full bed, pushing out this red devil Astelia down here into the palm just next to it. And basically obscuring the view of the Jabea palm just behind it. So what I'm going to do today is remove this and try to rescue it. It doesn't like being disturbed. So what I'm going to have to do is cut this back quite a lot of the leaves and see if it will survive when I transplant it. So I'm just going to cut this back now. And if we take a closer look at this delia, you can see it's completely going over this path. So it does need removing transplanting and um, because we've quite a bad winter it's gone quite tatty as well so cutting it back when i've transplanted it will hopefully make the appearance of it much better and hopefully it'll survive so let's cut it back now right i'm going to get in there and dig around this plant and i'm going to try to get it out as one big plant because over the years it's made lots and lots of rosettes but it's going to spade in dig all the way around but it is a substantial plant so it might take me some time and now as you can see the astelia has been removed and left a, a nice big gap for a much smaller shade tolerant plant to replace it also gives a really good view of the jubea palm and you can see the massive trunk that's forming at the base of this palm now so let's get on with splitting up the astelia now I've dug up the astelia, you can see it's one big root ball, quite fleshy roots actually on this and that actual plant itself is made up of lots of rosettes, if you look around several, there's probably well, well over 20 large rosettes in here. So I'm going to pull off all the dead foliage and see if I can divide this into a couple of plants in the garden. Right, let's see. Can split these? Ah, nearly. There we go. Nice bridal style. There we are. Got two nice big plants now. So I divided it now into two good plants and I probably could divide that second larger clump again but as it doesn't like root disturbance I'm not going to risk it. So this one here I've cut all the old leaves off quite a lot of leaves and I'm going to just transplant that over to its new home. Oh it's a heavy plant. So we've got a hole over here, and let's put that in. Be 
before I actually dig it in, let's have a look how it looks. Well, I think it needs trimming down a bit, but I think it'll look pretty good there. It likes sort of sun, but some shade as well, really. So it's going to get some shade from the, the archway over the pond, and when these grow up, there'll be shade from the, the sun a bit. But it is going to be more sun than it was before, so we'll have to see how that goes. And then we'll find a home for the other half of the plants. And one thing I should say is the soil I'm planting in is pretty free draining, sandy clay. This is all basically what I dug out the topsoil from the pond, mixed with lots of sand and a little bit of grit. So this is perfect for this dealia to be planted into. And that's the second half of this stelia planted by the pond in a much sunnier position, so we'll see how that goes. And it looks a bit tatty and battered about at the moment, but it won't be long until the new leaves come through and can clear away all the damaged leaves. So I'll give that a really good water now to settle the roots. And I think both of these, this one here and the other one on the other side of the bridge, should look good by midsummer. So now I've cleared this steely away, I can easily walk down this path without having to jump across it and pass the Astelia. And it does give me a big planting opportunity down here, but I don't want to put anything big in this area, because I want to be able to see the Jabea palm just over there, with its nice big trunk. So it'll be a low growing, small plant will go in here, and it's really free draining sandy soil in this area. And just to the side, we've got the Astelia Red Devil with its red copperish leaves that reflect the sun on this corner. And this grows much, much smaller than the Astelia Silver Spear that we removed. And on the other side, we've got the palm Trachycarpus ulcerensis with its whitish underside big leaves, but you can see the trunk itself over the years has moved and this is called creep. So if we look down here you can see that the palm started in this location and over the years it has crept and the trunk is now going at an angle out in this direction. This is what some Trachycarpus palms do especially when they've been growing in a pot for a long time. This one was in a pot for about seven years before it was planted out, but it still continued to creep a little bit as well. It's a fantastic, unusual and hardy Chakicarpus palm. These great big silver leaves on the underside. It's a bit like a, a princeps palm, but a bit different. So I hope that will grow up now into a, a large palm up into the sky in this area. It is planted quite close to the Jabea, but not too close that will interfere with the spread. Although the Jabea has grown very large and it's already pushing out several new leaves this spring. Now this is my Chemorops arborescence. It's a single trunk forming Chemorops. And as you can see, the centre is not looking good. The outer leaves look fine, but as you go towards the centre, they've dried up, crinkled together. And I bet if I pull the centre very easily, it will come out. So let's have a look. Yeah, that's come out. Yeah, full centre, not really pulling. Full centre of the palm there has come out, leaving a hole in the middle. Now that is called spear pull. There you are, it's rotted at the end, or the start of the base of the, where the leaves are going to come out on all those. What's going to happen now, hopefully, is new leaves will grow out the centre. 
it might not, it might be the demise of this plant, which actually could suck a on the base and survive because it is a chemorox. But hopefully by mid to late summer we'll have lots of new leaves pushing out the centre of there. Now water can collect in the centre because there's a bit of a hole. So I'll dust a bit of sulphur down there and put a little bit of fleece over the top just to stop too much water going in the centre. And hopefully that'll come back. So that is a classic example of staple which happens after we've had a bit of warm. So although the plant looks nice and healthy, the centre just rotted away very quickly over a few days, because this was looking fine last week, and because we had the heat last week, it's pushed out the rot, pushed out the steer of this plant. And here is another plant that's spear pulled, this came up serifera spear pulled in several places including this one here but there are some spears that haven't spear pulled so overall this plant will carry on growing it does show that you don't need absolutely freezing temperatures to get spear pulled because we only had minus minus five here but it's been enough to spear pull on this plant and as expected this princeps hybrid that spear pulls Every year it's spear pulled again this year, but I know almost certainly it'll come back strong in midsummer. So, quite a lot of palms have spear pulled mainly because of warm weather last week has triggered the rot to hurry up and the growth to start or not to start, and that's when the spears come loose and can be easily pulled out. Hopefully, you haven't got much damage in your garden. Now, this spray at Marta. I started pushing out two new leaves, look gorgeous, but as we go into the centre, unfortunately, it's quite wet. It's starting to go brown in there, so that might spear pull, unfortunately. That's not happened before the Bayer Marta. Hopefully it's a strong enough established plant that it will carry on growing later in summer if it does spear pull. Fingers crossed it does. Now this Euphorbia millerifera has got through winter totally fine and is now flowering with its honey-like scent and it's grown a bit too well really but it's covering a very large area so what I'm going to do is take away these lower branches wearing gloves because I don't want the latex sap to burn my skin and that will allow more light down to the collocations below and a bit further back so this is growing really, really strongly, but I'm just going to show you another Euphorbia that's not doing so well. So this Euphorbia here, it's never really grown well, it's always had some sort of blemishes on the leaves. And as you can see, it's got these red brown dying off leaves, so it's not a healthy looking plant. The newest foliage is okay but it quickly goes like this, so there's something going on here. So what I'm going to do is cut this right back to the ground and hopefully new foliage will appear without this damage on it. So that's what I'll do now. So I've cut all that back now, all the big stems right down to the ground, but I've left, as you can see, there's three young shoots there hopefully will grow up without the damage which I don't know if it was mechanical damage or there's some sort of fungal issue with this plant or some sort of soil issue but we'll see when it grows back and just to show you the cut ends here of the euphorbia being careful here that is white milky sap like latex that is very bad if you get it on your skin it can burn your skin it's very sticky, so be very careful when you're handling this. So I'll carry up, pick up all these bits and put them in the, the garden recycling bin. And actually this plant here, it is pretty close to this corder line behind and this black bamboo. But we'll let it grow up a bit, see if it's any damage. If it continues to look bad, I will dig this up and plant it elsewhere in the garden and give it another chance. Now in this border we have a huge mass of Persicaria 
purple fantasy. It looks fantastic with its really strong markings as it comes through in spring. And it's it's really spread, I wouldn't quite call it invasive, but it's really spread over a large area now. So I'm gonna enjoy it because I don't need to plant anything else in this area for now. But when I do I will cut back a lot of this plant, divide it, put it in other parts of the garden and remove some of it because it's covering like I said few meters and the good thing about this plant is it can be chopped back so I'll give it the Chelsea chop at the end of May and it'll come back strong again so that's Persicaria purple fantasy so now I thought I'd give an update on my carnivorous plants that have been out all winter apart from one week when they went in the garage when the beast fleas came and here we've got these pitcher plants. We've got the native Yorkshire native here from the eastern moors in Yorkshire in the Pennines. And this, these old pitchers look okay, but if you can see in the centre, that's where the new growth should come through. And you can see it's just starting to grow. Now just next to that you've got Purpurea venosa. Again, that's looking okay. I'll remove these older pictures. In the middle, we've got some new growth appearing. And this is an unknown one that I got from an indoor section in a garden centre. And the old pictures have died off, but again, in the middle, we've got that reddish new growth. So I'm pleased with those. And again, another picture here with quite large pictures. This is Saracena Eva and by the side of that we've got the Venus flytraps and they've been out all winter again and the old foliage has died back as expected but in the middle look we've got lots of new pit and lots of new flytraps appearing which is great to see so it looks like they've survived the winter so I'll do an update at them in summer when they're in full growth Thanks for watching this week's episode of Yorkshire Chris Weekly. There won't be an episode next week because the only job I really need to get on with is pressure washing all the decking to get rid of all the winter rubbish. So it won't make a very interesting video. But I'll be back the week after that. In the meantime, happy gardening. Don't forget, next Saturday is Naked Gardening Day.